Good morning, Bainbridge and beyond. When we arrived this morning, we entered into the normal bustle of a church on a Sunday morning. Friends greeting each other, acolytes preparing to start worship, children bringing their energy and enthusiasm. Now that we are sitting together in the pews and at home, I invite you to close your eyes and consider the word sanctuary. A sanctuary is a place set aside for sacred things. It is a place of refuge and protection. This room is a sanctuary. The season of Lent is kind of a sanctuary, extended in time. And one of the things Lent teaches you is that you too are a sanctuary. There is inside you a place for sacred things, a place where God abides. As we extinguish this light, we acknowledge the darkness and pain of war and oppression in the world. Let us pray. Loving God, we open our hearts to you. We invite you into, into our innermost being, only to find you already there. Strengthen us in our quiet places, and then lead us into the work of justice and peace. Amen.
Good morning. It is good to see all of you here and to have you in worship with us, whether we can actually see you or whether you are at home and uh, watching from the comfort of your couch. We are still together as a community and we are glad you are here. If you are visiting with us for the first time, please stop by the table on the way out. We'll give you some more information about the church and learn how we can, can be with you as part of your faith journey. If you're online, I can't see you, so you're going to have to raise your electronic hand, put a message in the Facebook message, send us an email, whatever works to let us know that you are visiting with us for the first time, because we would love to be a part of your faith journey as well. So a couple of announcements to lift up. It is the beginning of the month, and so that means uh, the first Monday, we pray for our students at Before the Bell. So at 7 a.m., you can join people from all over the community at the Paint Valley High School. Uh, just gather in the parking lot. Anybody who's crazy enough to be out there at 7 a.m. is praying. So you've got the right group. It's good. So please join them. We pray not only for Paint Valley High School. We pray for Pickaway Ross School and for Lighthouse as well. Those are the three schools that are in our community. Now, if you're like, oh, my goodness, I cannot possibly get there by 7 a.m., that's okay. God still takes your prayers. So when you wake up on, on Monday morning, please pray for our students. They are hitting that time of, of testing, and it's they're getting spring fever, so maybe pray for the teachers. We just need to keep praying for the school because it is, it is a challenging time for all of us, and uh, they need all the prayer that they can get. Now, we are cruising right through Lent, and next week is Palm Sunday. I love Palm Sunday here. It is so much fun. So you don't want to come at 10 o'clock because you're going to miss all the fun and excitement. You want to be here at 8.30. Because at 8.30, we gather for our Palm Sunday processional. And I have never been in anywhere that does it like this. And it is fun. At, by 9 o'clock, we are praying and following a donkey. Yes, a real live donkey. And we are proceeding through town. They, they shut down one lane of 50 for us. It's so much fun. And we just sing and we wave our palms. Be careful where you walk. Don't get too close to the donkey. You know, it is a donkey after all, and it is a real donkey. But we will walk at that donkey's pace through town uh, just like Jesus did uh, in his processional. So please be sure to join us. We'll try and get a little bit uh, a snippet on, online, uh, do a little bit of Facebook Live. We won't do the whole processional but you'll at least kind of get a feel of it. So really hope you can uh, be with us to kick off Holy Week in this really unique way, and it's just, it's just a wonderful time. Also, if you're like, ah, oh, that sounds like fun, but I can't walk that far, that's okay. Mr. Hausman's got you covered. He's coming with the golf cart, so we have room for a few that are slower walkers to, uh, to be chauffeured behind the donkey. So we would love to have you. It is a wonderful time of community building and worship, and then we come back here for snacks, donuts or something, whatever people have figured out. So I look forward to seeing all of you at that event. At this time, I invite the kids to come forward. You sit right there. Oh, I like your shirt. That's really cool. All right. Oh, now I've got myself tangled. Anybody know what these are? What are those? That's a cross. It sort of looks like a necklace. Uh, you know what it is. What are these? These are rosaries. So our Catholic brothers and sisters have this really neat prayer practice called a rosary. And and these are kind of, this is a very cheap one. I got it for free, so it's really cheap. But it has little sections, and you pray different things um, as you go through that. Now, we're not Catholic, so we don't pray it quite the same, but we can still use prayer beads like this that are already put together. So the easy, simple way for us to pray is we would grab this, and there's 10 beads in each section. So we would take these 10 beads, and the first section would be, I praise you, God, for. I praise you, God, that the snow is gone. I praise you, God, for my funny cats. I praise you, God, for my family. So you go through and keep doing that for 10, 10 beads. Then you get to the next section, and you say, Lord, I ask you forgiveness for being short-tempered, 
yelling at drivers on the road. Um, I think that's enough confession for now. We'll move on to the next section. It's okay. When you drive, you'll understand. It's okay. Um, the next section is joys and concerns. Who are you praying for? Um, I'm praying for my dad because he doesn't feel good. Uh, I'm praying for all of you who have tests in the next couple weeks because you need all the help you can get. So that's what we do at the next section. And then the last section is I thank you for. God, I thank you that you are amazing. God, I thank you how much you love me. And so you do it with each section. Now, that's a fun way to do the rosary. And then you get to the end and you can say our Lord's Prayer that some of you have learned. And, and that's the one we say every week in worship. That's one way of praying with beads. We're going to do something that's even simpler this, this morning. So when, we, when you go back, you're going to make your own prayer beads. So you're going to get it kind of a, to choose a color of kind of this springy sort of thing. And you put a knot in the bottom, and then you're going to put beads on it. And those beads represent something you're praying for. So for me, I put my family. This first one is Craig. That's my husband. This is James, because his favorite color is blue. Elizabeth likes purple. She gets purple. Lila likes purple, too, but she got pink instead, because I had to make them different. Then my dad is yellow. My mom is red. My brother loves green. And the white one is for anything else I have to pray about. And the last one, there are some heart beads in there. Um, you're going to have to dig. They're in, a, they're in a, a glass jar, and there's just a few of them. So share the heart beads. The heart one is to remind me how much Jesus loves me. And then it's got, I make a little loop, and I put a clip so I can clip it on my purse or whatever. But I can pray anytime, and I can just sit there, and I can feel the beads. I can close my eyes. You can change what the beads need. It might be, I'm going to pray for things I'm thankful for. And each bead, you pray for something you're thankful for. So you get to make your own prayer beads. You get to put whatever colors you want on them. Um, and you can put the clip. You don't have to put the clip. They're pretty simple. But this is just a way sometimes to help us pray. Because sometimes you sit there with your eyes closed and your mind goes everywhere. And it's hard. But if you're holding on to something that says, I pray for my husband because he puts up with me. I pray for my son because he's in the Navy and that's hard work. I pray for my daughter who's a senior. Thank God that's almost done. She's so excited. So you can pray for each person this way. And it doesn't have to be family. It could be your, I'm sorry, I'm picking on you today, my lovely daughter. Um, it could be your best friend. It could be your pets. It could be your neighbors. It doesn't have to be just family, but maybe the people who are, and things are most important to you. So you get to go back and play with beads. Please pick up any that fall on the floor because they will, okay, so that you don't leave Miss Jennifer and Miss Ethel making, cleaning up the mess. So you guys ready to do your own prayer beads? All right. Let's do a quick prayer, and then you can get started. Dear God, we thank you for the people in our lives, some who are related to us, some who we love as if they were related to us. Be with us today as we make our prayer beads so that we can find a way to be closer to you. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you take that with you so they can see what I did? Thank you. <laughs> One of the things as adults, if you use prayer beads, um, there is this repetitiveness of saying a prayer over and over again that begins to clear your mind. And you can, it's amazing you can like think two things at once. So you can be praying the Lord's Prayer and at the same time praying for world peace. So it's, it's a neat practice. Um, and we are allowed to borrow from fellow brothers and sisters um, of some of the spiritual practices because let me just put a plug in for Roman Catholics they have some really deep and wonderful spiritual practices that that we can learn from as well so this morning we have an opportunity to respond to God and all that God is doing in our lives and we do that through our giving not because we have to but because God has been so generous and gracious with us if you're here, you can go ahead and put it in the offering plate. If you're online, just go ahead and get on, onto our website, bainbridgeumc.com. There's a link there to, to be able to give. Or you can mail it in. Any of those ways work. As you uh, give, remember that we are doing a special offering during Lent for 2B, 3N, two boards, three nails. 
and this is a uh, nonprofit group that works with building ramps for people in Ross County who need, those, need that accessibility into their own home. As United Methodists, uh, we are very active in social justice and caring for people on the margins of society. Algiers United Methodist Church in Louisiana provided social justice by repenting of a previous wrong. They are celebrating their 175th anniversary, which is very exciting. And as they were getting ready for the celebration, they were doing some more digging into the history of the church. And they discovered a news article from 1922 that talked about how the church had received a $100 donation from the Ku Klux Klan. It's a different time in 1922 than it is now. But we know the basics of what the Klan stands for, and it is not for what Jesus stands for. And this church in, in Louisiana is a church that is growing in diversity, and they looked at this and thought, this, this is not who we are anymore. And so they made a commitment to raise $1,675. Now that would be what $100 would be worth now from 1922, if you've translated it, $1,675. And they're going to do that throughout the year till they get to their amount. And they're going to give that to organizations that strengthen people of color and work to eradicate racism. What this church is doing is acknowledging the past sins of the church. They didn't have to do this. It was from 1922. I don't think there's a whole lot of people who actually remember that incident. But they still provide penance for what they as a community did. And they recognize that they are growing in faith, which is why they wanted to do the best to right this wrong. Their pastor, Reverend Joanne Pounds, says this, the, this congregation will not be defined by gifts received from white supremacist organizations in the community who seek to exclude, but by the way we give back to our community, a diverse, beautiful, inclusive community of God's children here in old Algiers. So you see, the United Methodist Church often has some unique opportunities to provide racial healing and we give thanks for churches like Algiers United Methodist who are willing to take a risk for the sake of the gospel. So as we go to our time of prayer, we, we remember churches like Algiers who are brave and who are willing to speak up so that there is social justice, so there is justice for all. We also remember churches in our area, whether you are from Bainbridge, then you'll pray these for Friendship United Methodist and their pastor, Be uh, Greg Carter, and Fruitdale United Methodist and their pastor, Jeff Barnhart. If you're not from this area, make sure that you are praying for your local churches as well, whether they're United Methodist or other denominations, because we're all serving one Lord and Savior. We continue to pray for peace for Ukraine and Russia, and um, I know that the stories we are hearing are horrifying and uh, they, they do not resemble Christ at all. And so we ask for, for peace to ensue, for the Ukrainians to be, go back to living their lives, for a change of heart in leadership uh, in Russia. And so we just want the peace of Christ to extend over that region so people can go about the business that they were called to do. Now this morning, as, as it is Lent, and you're getting kind of used to the fact that you never know what's going to happen in prayer time, that's okay, it's only a couple more weeks of Lent, and then we'll go back to your regularly scheduled prayer time. This week is Centering Prayer. And again, this may stretch you a little bit, but we're going to try it. So when you do Centering Prayer, what you do is you close your eyes and try and get quiet. Your thoughts may wander. I am the queen at this. I'm really good at, like... I close my eyes to pray and I think about what needs shopping, what shopping needs to be done and oh, I need to get Holy Week services uh, written up and I need to do this and I need to do that and your brain just starts going like crazy. So what you want to do when you're doing centering prayer, you hear that thought and then you just let it go. I, I, I'll, I'll get to the groceries later. It's okay. And what to help us do that is we have a sacred word that brings us back into focus. It might be um, a, a word about God, like Abba, Jesus, Mary, 
or come, Lord. So you hear, I got I to gotta get the groceries done, and you say, come, Lord, and it brings you back to center. Or you could use a phrase like love, peace, be still. Mine is be still because that's challenging for me. It's not a mantra. You don't sit there and close your eyes and go, be still, be still, be still, be still. You close your eyes, you listen in the quiet, and when your mind takes a funky turn, you just say, be still, and bring it back, okay? Um, we're going to do this. We're going to have two minutes of silence. Don't worry if you sneeze or you cough or you, you shuffle and the, the pews creak. We're going to hear noises. That's okay. If you have a kid with you and they say something, don't freak out. It's just where we are, and that's just part of this prayer time, and it is okay. Um, when we are ready to finish, um, I have a prayer bowl, and I will ring that so it doesn't startle you out of prayer. It's a nice way to get out. And as that sound dies down, we will move into um, a time of, of praying together with the Lord's Prayer. So go ahead and close your eyes, get comfortable. I know it's hard in the pews. People at home have the advantage on this one. If you need to put your feet down, if you're short, you want to put your feet up, that's all right, whatever works. Take a few deep breaths, just kind of to let all of the last week out. And as you rest into that stillness, find that phrase, that word that's going to help you pull back and just live into this silence. Let us pray. And together we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We are in the midst of a series about God on the move. And we are reminded that no matter where life takes us, God is on the move with us. We have learned that God is with us in the desert times, that God can get us through any and all obstacles, that when God moves with us, we move deeper into our faith. And that we learned last week there is nowhere that we can run that God won't follow us and be there with outstretched arms waiting for us to come home. 
So now we read from the Gospel of John, chapter 12. Let us listen for the word of God. Six days before Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, home of Lazarus, whom Jesus had raised from the dead. Lazarus and his sisters had hosted a dinner for him. Martha served, and Lazarus was among those who joined him at the table. Then Mary took an extraordinary amount, almost three quarters of a pound, of a very expensive perfume made of pure nard. She anointed Jesus' feet with it, then wiped his feet dry with her hair. The house was filled with the aroma of the perfume. Judas Iscariot, one of the disciples, the one who was about to betray Jesus, complained this perfume was worth a year's wages. Why wasn't it sold and the money given to the poor? He said this not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. He carried the money bag and he would take whatever was in it. Then Jesus said, leave her alone. This perfume is to be, was to be used in preparation for my burial, and this is how she used it. You will always have the poor among you, but you won't always have me. This is God's word for God's people, and we give God thanks. So in this story, Mary, the sister of Lazarus, Lazarus and Martha, did an unusual and extravagant thing after dinner with Jesus. Now keep in mind, in this time period, your feet get pretty dirty because you're wearing sandals, there's dust, you don't have nice, sturdy hiking boots. People's feet are dirty. But that didn't bother Mary. If you remember the story of Mary and Martha, where Martha was working busy in the kitchen and Mary was at the feet of Jesus listening, this is that same pair of sisters and Martha's still in the kitchen working and Mary is still at the feet of Jesus. They are so thankful because Jesus raised their brother from the dead. So she brings out this perfume that would be worth today like $30,000. This is not cheap perfume. This is a year's wages type of perfume. It was a tremendous gift both monetarily and spiritually. You see, she was anointing Christ. And anointing has multiple meanings. The first is usually for healing. We anoint someone when, when they're struggling with an illness or, or they're, they're wrestling with a spiritual crisis. We anoint for healing. But anointing also means consecration. So kings and queens are often anointed even to this day to show that they are royalty, that they are set apart. But it is also used for burial. This is the, the anointing oil that they used to prepare for the dead. And here is Mary, and she is just pouring out everything to Christ. And, and in some ways, all these meanings are merged in her pouring out to Christ. And this is really vulnerable, what she has done. She's a woman doing something that is out of the ordinary, that means she is open to a lot of criticism. She can expect that Jesus might even reject her gift. But this, she just, she can't help it. It's a thank you for her, for still having her brother around. It's a praise for all of the holiness and greatness of Christ. And so she just went ahead and did it. So we are to be like Mary. We are to empty ourselves completely to give our very best to God. So when we empty ourselves, what does that mean? It means that first we must get rid of the sin in our lives. We all have it. We're not all willing to say it out loud, but I'm betting one of these nine hits you. Anger, pride, deceit, envy, Avarice, which is also greed or desire, fear, lack of self-control, shamelessness, laziness. There are other sins as well, but these are the most common. 
And so we're called to confess these sins before God. And, and we often do that before we, we take of the, the feast of Christ in communion. But we are called to confess them. And when we confess our sin, it's what we're doing. We're saying, here, Lord, take this. Take it out of me. You take it. I don't want to do this sin anymore. Help me to be more like you. So when we work with the Holy Spirit to remove the sin in our lives, it helps us to draw closer to Christ. There was a Christian counselor who was working with a man who was having trouble controlling his anger. His outbursts were affecting his family and his work, and he decided to, that he needed help, and he was brave enough to accept that help. And so he went to see this counselor, and, and she was encouraging him to see life in a different way. She asked him, what would your life look like if you got rid of your anger? And he paused, he thought about it, and he answered, but if I get rid of my anger, what will I have left? You see, often we're afraid to get rid of our sin. Our bad habits take up so much space within us that when, when it's gone, we feel empty and vulnerable and lost without it. The good news is that Jesus promises to fill that emptiness with something even better than what we have let go. So when we allow the Holy Spirit to fill this emptiness inside us, we begin to experience a variety of growths, of, of, of gifts. The first one is growth. We might also gain freedom or grace. God fills us with hope. We become more united with God. We become wiser. We have faith or a deeper trust. We begin to cooperate with God instead of working against the Holy Spirit. We receive mercy and truth. We receive love. But if we don't get rid of the sin in our lives, then there's no room left for the beautiful gifts that God wants to give us and that God is ready to offer us. You see, there once was a king who announced a painting contest. He had a beautiful new palace and it had a main entrance that needed a beautiful work of art. And the king saw his, his kingdom as a peaceful land. And so he wanted a painting that best symbolized peace. And so he was going to offer a cash prize for this. And the paintings that you see here are similar to, to what was described. And these are the two favorites that the king had. And the first one, up there in the corner with the deer, very calming, peaceful lake, tranquil. There's just not a ruffle in it. You just kind of, oh, isn't that beautiful? Look, soft, fluffy clouds, nice little mountain. It's just beautiful. You just want to talk really quietly about it. It's very peaceful. But the second painting there, you can hear the water almost roaring as it crashes off the cliff, and there's just water spurting up. If you've seen waterfalls, you know they don't just come gently down. They just boom, and right on the water and the rocks, and it's splashing everywhere. There is not a bit of peacefulness. And then there's this crazy bird who's put a nest on a rock right next to all of this chaos. And that's the second painting. Interesting choice. So the, the king left these paintings up for a while to, for the people to see, and then he announced his choice. He chose the second one, the crashing water and the bird. The reason for that is because even in the midst of all that chaos, that bird's not freaking out. That bird is calm, peaceful, caring for its nest. And the king said, peace is not the absence of conflict. Peace is a state of mind. Those who experience peace have love in their hearts, even when turmoil surrounds them. This peace the king was talking about is the kind of peace that we get when we get rid of our sin. We get rid of it, God fills us with peace. It's such a better gift than having anger or hate. So when we allow these gifts of Christ to fill our very soul, it's going to overflow into the world around us. 
So the Oscar awards this week had many interesting moments. No, I'm not talking about that moment. I'm talking about this moment. This is Lady Gaga and Liza Minnelli. So here, just to help the generational gap a little bit. Lady Gaga, the blonde, is one of the world's best-selling musicians. She is the only female, <clears throat> only female artist to have four singles, which have sold over 10 million copies worldwide. She has a plethora of awards, She's a philanthropist who encourages others to give to things like the 2010 Haiti earthquake and then again in 11, an earthquake and tsunami that hit Japan. And she's also a political activist. Anybody under the age of 20 knows the name and music of Lady Gaga. The second dark-haired woman is Liza Minnelli. Some of you recognize her. She's an she was an actress, singer, dancer, and choreographer. She also, like Lady Gaga, has won lots of awards and honors, but she's had health issues recently, and she rarely makes public appearances. But she made the public appearance for announcing the best uh, movie of the year because it was the 50th anniversary of her musical film Cabaret, which is one of the parts she is best known for. So here come the awards ceremony. We have these two megastars on stage. Liza arrives, as you can see, in a wheelchair. But when she gets there, Lady Gaga encourages the audience to cheer for her, to show their love and appreciation. It wasn't about her. It was about Liza Minnelli. And throughout the time they were up there, she lovingly held Liza's hand to give her strength and comfort and Liza would kind of stumble over her lines, and Lady Gaga just gently cued her and let her do the best that she can do. And at one point, Lady Gaga seemed to have forgotten that her mic was on, and she leans over to Liza Minnelli and says, I got you. And Liza responds, I know. Thank you. When it came time to announce the award, Lady Gaga opened the envelope for Liza but let Liza make the announcement for Best Picture, which, by the way, was CODA, in case you were wondering. But that beautiful moment should have superseded anything else that happened that night. Because like the fragrance of Mary's anointing oil that filled the room of the disciples, Lady Gaga's love and grace filled the stage. Her kind gestures allowed Liza Minnelli, Minnelli to do her best with dignity. When Christ has filled our lives, we will overflow his love without realizing it, without even thinking about it. And so as we overflow into the world around us, the Holy Spirit will use us to touch the lives of others. The Bible doesn't really say much about how Mary's action has impacted anyone but Judas, who a bit cynical there, but her gift must have made a difference because her story ended up in the Bible. It was worthy of being retold. And so God used her overflowing love even to this day. In 1985, Steve Reynolds was a young man working for World Vision in Ethiopia in response to a horrible famine. He was there gathering information about massive starvation and how people were still dying even in the relief camps that had been established. He was trying his best to get the world to notice that crisis. And if you were alive during the 80s, you will probably remember how much of a crisis that, that was in Ethiopia and the world did eventually pay attention. But in the midst of this, Steve was asked to host a young European couple, Allie and Paul Hewson. They wanted to know firsthand what was really going on in Ethiopia. The couple stayed for almost a month, and they helped out wherever they could. They, they responded to helping at the relief camp with compassion. Paul was a musician, and so he also used that gift to entertain children and wrote songs for them and tried to bring some joy into their lives. The couple left, determined to do what they could to help. After that trip, Paul became an advocate for the poorest of the poor. He has sent, since met with kings and queens, presidents and prime ministers, and even the Pope, 
to share about how to care for the poorest of the poor. He has lobbied members of parliament and congress. He's persuaded governments to appropriate billions of dollars for aid to the poor. And he also continued his day job as the lead singer of the band U2. Yep, Paul Hewson is better known as Bono. But when you ask Bono what set his feet on this path, he credits Steve Reynolds with teaching him and inspiring him. Steve is still working at World Vision. He's still encouraging others to be advocates for the poor, and he's still speaking up for the marginalized of society. Steve is willing to go wherever Christ can use him. Steve Reynolds emptied himself of the things which blocked his relationship with Christ. And once Christ filled him with precious gifts, Steve overflowed into the world, giving his best to God and those around him. And then it just trickled from there. So Steve gives to Bono, and Bono gives to the rest of the world, and then it gives to somebody else, and who gives to somebody else. You never run out of God's love. So we are to empty ourselves, to give our very best to God. That means we confess and release our sins to God and allow the Holy Spirit to come in and bring something new and Christ-like into our lives. I know I make that sound easy. I know it's not. It's hard. It's hard work because we give it to God and then we take it back. And then we give it to God and then we take it back. You have to give it and leave it. But it's a process. Then when those gifts begin to fill us and replace, us, replace those sins, we can pour those gifts out on others, anointing them in the name of Christ, honoring our Savior through the way we act. So what do you need to let go of to get closer to Christ? Anger? Laziness? Fear? How can you overflow and anoint others with God's love this week. Maybe it's showing kindness to a neighbor or a friend or a complete stranger. Or maybe it's being bold enough to tell somebody about how Christ has impacted your week. It might be like, hey, we had this really cool worship service. Our pastor's the best. Okay, that one's good. But you could also say, in my devotions, I was reading this and, and I'm really working on not being angry as much. However it is, to just share a little bit with someone else about why you would bother to get up on a Sunday morning to show up here for this or to take the time to find us online and to, to learn about Christ. This morning after our worship service, we will have a time of anointing available. You can come forward and receive a prayer to help with just this process of needing to empty yourself. Or maybe you want to come forward for a prayer of healing for yourself or someone you love. Or maybe you just want a time of prayer. Whatever it is, following our uh, benediction, we will have that opportunity and I will be up here to provide you anointing so you may be an anointing blessing to others. So now we prepare for communion through our music and as you, you hear or sing along, ponder how you can honor Christ with humility and vulnerability and empty yourselves to allow God to fill us into something amazing and unexpected.
As we receive communion this morning, we're going to do it just a little bit different. Um, we're still sort of in COVID, but there is something powerful about sharing a common loaf. So you're going to come forward, and I will give you a piece of bread. I've just washed my hands, so we're good. Um, and then you will receive a cup, and go ahead, take the cup and drink it. And then uh, Rose will be standing here for a place to put the empty cup. If that's not comfortable for you, there right in front of me is the all-in-one packets, and you're welcome to grab one of those. If you're at home, you can pause for a moment and run to the kitchen and grab your elements that you want to share with us. I know for those at home, we're going to be saying the body and blood of Christ, and you're not necessarily going to hear them. So as you see folks come forward, that's your, time, that's your cue to go ahead and, and take communion at home. After you've received communion, you are welcome to stay and, and kneel or sit on the front pew and offer a time of prayer um, as long as, as, as you want. So now we come to God's table and offer these words. Holy and blessed God, we give you thanks for your love and the love in which you made us for yourself. And when we have fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, your love remained steadfast. You bid your faithful people cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Easter feast that renewed by your word and sacraments and fervent in prayer and works of justice and mercy, we may come to the fullness of grace and that you have prepared this for those who love you. Lord, holy are you and blessed is your son Jesus Christ, whom you sent in the fullness of time to redeem the world. He emptied himself, taking the form of a servant, being born in our likeness, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even death on a cross. He took upon himself our sin and death offered and offered himself a perfect sacrifice for the sin of the whole world. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church. You delivered us from slavery to sin and death and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On that night that Jesus was with his disciples, he took, took the bread and he blessed it and he broke it, giving thanks to God. And he said, take, eat, this is my body broken for you. And then he took the cup and he blessed it, giving thanks to God and said, this is my blood shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Drink this in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of all that Christ has done for you and continues to do for all of us, we offer ourselves as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us. Lord, we ask you to pour out your Holy Spirit upon us gathered here both in person and in our homes. Pour your, your spirit out on these gifts of bread and wine and make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. Make your spirit make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. All honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. As my communion servers are coming forward, I do remind you that if you are not able to come forward, um, just raise a hand and we will come to you after we've served everyone else and there's no ushers telling you when to come up so when the spirit moves you you come forward
Let us pray. Dear God, we have emptied ourselves before you, and we accept this gift of love that you have given us. Let us go and share it with all those around us so they too may know the joy of being children of God. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. And if uh, you are able, stand as you are able at home, sit up straight so you can sing well as we sing our closing hymn, Beneath the Cross of Jesus. So our young men are taking the light of Christ back into the world, which is what each of us is called to do, to be the light of Christ in the world. If you have friends or family members who can't be here and maybe don't watch us online, please feel free to take one of the all-in-one uh, communion elements, and you may take that and just pull up this service on Facebook, and you can play that with them and allow them to be a part of the community. So you are welcome to do that. And remember, well, I'm up here for prayer and anointing for those who would like to do that. So go from here, being the light of the world, because you have emptied yourself before God and accepted all the gifts that God has given you. Go in peace.